They're already struggling. That's a bad sign anyways. There's a, there's a low chance of survival at that point, but one of them survived. So the bakers, we're doing something a little bit different. I can't wait to show you what else we're getting ourselves into, but I'm excited about this one. Yeah, do we get? Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. This is Cora. If you guys didn't know, our two-year-old buckskin filly. And back here, the newest member, which is a Morgan Wild, a Bay Roan filly. She's a yearling now. These two are getting along. Just giving you a little update on them. They're like two teenage sisters or something. I don't know what you would call it, but Cora here is the boss. Cora, you're covering mud, girl. You're covering mud. You sure are pretty, though. The Big Joe herd is moving, doing their thing, grazing, living the dream, green grass. Not only are we bison ranching. So the bakers, we're doing something a little bit different. I can't wait to show you what else we're getting ourselves into, but I'm excited about this one because I've been wanting to do it for a while. You girls, get along. I say they're getting along and then here you go. Always a little scuffling, Cora, be nice. Be nice, she's sweet. These girls. Got something else I told you in my last video was about to happen. Well, let's go in the barn and take a look. All right, good morning guys. Here we are, we've got about five in there. And uh, maybe more, can't really tell. But uh, we're gonna do a little transfer. They've been in here for about eight or 12 hours or so. So they look pretty dry, bundled up. We're gonna move them here in our box and go to their temporary home. Gotta make kind of room for the others too because there's still quite a few eggs to hatch. Hopefully they do hatch. These guys here look like they're still pretty fresh. Another one hatching here, and another one hatching right here. But I'm getting a little nervous about fourteen of them that are not. So we'll take a look at them. We'll put these guys up real quick.
So I've already got water feed in there for them. They're ready to go. Just add them. Probably like put me back in that heat that was warm. I'm gonna put them in here and then I'm gonna dip their beaks in the water here in just a second once I get situated. He looks pretty young. He may need to sit in the incubator, but he should be okay. But I need to dip their beaks in the water and then these guys will be good to go. You hear? What this is? How do we get? I want to see it. I'm gonna put it down. I want to see it, Dad. No, boy. Pull it. Get back. <laughs> get back. Pull it. Get. Hey, buddy. Hey, what? All right, what we did is we went to Tractor Supply and we've got black Australops. Four, four, that was the minimum. So we're gonna put them in here. Okay, you wanna put them in there? Got to 
Well, oh, he's so I have excited. a new home. Well, he just wants to see. It's just too short. Stay Don't back. here. Easy. Don't just drop him. There, or she. These are all pullets. All right, one more. Now the turkey's got some buddies. Luckily, Tractor Ooh, Supply still has one. some. Easy, put it down in there. I'm done easy. There you go. They'll find the water because they're used to the water's being that like that. Oh, there, there we go. Ah! These guys got some buddies now. Like so we heard that the chicks actually help. Teach the turkeys how to eat and drink. That's what the, one of the videos said. Yeah, so people have raised them together, so that's okay. We'll try it. We're gonna try it. I don't know. Already getting along. All right, looks like we've got two more. So these are the two that I, uh, I had to break open their shell. They were really struggling. I don't know how this one's gonna make it or not. He really had a hard time coming out of his shell and he still got some of it attached to him. I just didn't want to rip um, cause I thought some of it would be a skin. This one seems to be doing pretty good up on his feet. This one started in the incubator, started cracking yesterday and it is doing great. Hopefully, some of the rest of these start hatching today because we got one day left. Pretty much will be today at the end of the day will be hopefully these will be cracking open too. But another one, so that's we got six in there right now. These two would be eight and then nine right here. Jeez, little fellow. Let me get you transferred over here. Yes. All right. Yeah, it's the journey of this too. So he's got some of his egg. He probably went, didn't develop all the way, is what I'm assuming, but. We're gonna do our best with him and see what we can hopefully makes it. So we'll put these little guys in there. All right, so we added the three more today. All the rest of them are doing good with the chicks. Can't hardly see them because of the wire, but. I'm just super sick about all of these eggs. Guys, I don't know why, what happened, and how come we don't have any more. It's just sad. So many eggs. These are like eight or nine dollar eggs. And I can feel like that one doesn't feel like it's formed at all. None of these are so many eggs that never made it. Big old eggs. We'll keep it running, but our chances are pretty slim. Hey, Jaggy, what are you doing, girl? You work hard last night? Stay up late? Oh, Jaggy. Hey, pretty girl. Very uh, sad and frustrated about uh, the turkey situation. Um, kind of a, one of those things I just don't understand. And, uh, you know, so where did I get those turkey eggs? When I started thinking about this conservation thing of the, of the wild turkey population here in our area, um, you can go back a couple videos. I explained why we started wanting to start raising eastern turkeys, wild eastern turkeys 
and the Rio Grande turkeys, why we, start, why we want to start doing it is because of the populations down here are low. Um, and then one thing, I had some people make comments on my previous video and said that uh, you have to have a permit and contact the state uh, to raise and release uh, wild turkeys. Well, you don't in the state of Oklahoma. I actually contacted the state government trapper and he said you don't. He actually has done it himself. He's the one that kind of inspired me to do this and he lives just not very far from us. But one of the things that we wanted to do uh, and that I've noticed as a you know hunter growing up and just somebody that pays attention to the environment, the ecology and the wildlife, what I noticed was that the turkey population was getting uh, very low and uh, other people recognize it, the states recognize it. So we uh, wanted to raise some turkeys. And so what I did was when I started thinking about this, I got on uh, websites and stuff, but I couldn't really find uh, eggs. You had to pre-order them. It was actually a, a pretty big deal, obviously. Other people want to do this, but what I had to do was is uh, I got to eBay I won a couple of bids and I ended up with a two dozen. I ordered two dozen uh, Eastern turkey eggs. The seller collected them. He said he checked for fertility on them. And then uh, he actually sent us extra. So I think we ended up with 30 eggs. And, and as you can see here in this video, unfortunately, we only hatched nine of 30. And you're going, Dusty, what happened? Well, I want to know the same thing. And since then, I've done some research, and I've learned that it is very hard to hatch wild turkey eggs. These are not the domestic ones. We don't want the domestic ones. We want specifically the two species that are naturally occurring here in Oklahoma and have naturally occurred. That's one, the eastern, and two, the Rio Grande. Um, I would have loved to have your Rio Grands, but there was not very, it was, they were hard to get. But we could get our hands on some Easterns and only nine out of the 30 hatch. So that is frustrating. Why all the incubator settings were good. We had one out of eight in one incubator and then eight more in the other incubator. So why I don't know, uh, but uh, that last one did not make it that uh, had the um, skin part of the egg still attached to it. I had a feeling that it probably wouldn't make it, but, and I know you typically shouldn't have to help them get out of their egg um, at hatching. Well, um, it was one of those things I was going to go ahead and try to help it because it had struggled for about almost a day. And I knew if I didn't help it, it was just going to die in there. I got that turkey about halfway out of the shell, put it back in the incubator, and then let it break its shell naturally. One of those didn't make it. And, um, so I knew that I had to do something, but if those turkeys are already struggling to hatch those last two, uh, and you know, the ones I had to help, if they're already struggling, that's a bad sign. Anyways, there's a, there's a low chance of survival at that point, but one of them survived. And so now we're left with eight turkeys and, um, we're going to raise them. We're going to do the best we can. What we're going to decide is I was hoping to get 30 or, or at least two dozen. We were going to raise them and let them go. But at this point, I would like a bigger population of turkeys before I just let them go. So we may just keep these eight, raise them up to adulthood, maybe have some eggs and some baby turkeys next year, some uh, turkey hatchings, and then we can hopefully let some go here on the Ponderosa. That is the goal, and I'm not I'm not going to stop on that goal until uh, I feel like it's right, uh, and we and we can succeed on reestablishing a population of wild turkeys here in uh, this part of Oklahoma. There are some here, and it's hard to see them, but you used to see a bunch, and uh, there's just not many around here now. And the state is recognizing that. I've recognized it, and so I want to help do that. It is not illegal to do that. If I raised a bunch of domestics and went and let them go, that's probably not smart. They're going to get eaten, right? But I'm working to try to help the wild population here any way I can. A lot of people do it uh, with Bob White Quail. Bob White Quail is a much tougher, by the way. That's it. Also, big exciting news. Marissa and I are making a huge change that will hopefully benefit the Ponderosa, our business, and everything. Stay tuned for the next video uh, some major changes and uh, let's just say 
it's going to involve this trailer right here just so you know thank you guys for watching us we'll keep on by syringe